What's up guys, Matt here with Matco Metalworks and um, so about, I don't know, two years ago, I posted a video about, time flies, that's why I don't know because it's been, it's been a while, but um, time just goes, uh, slips by so quick. It was about finding angles of stairs and basically what I, it was a very short two or three minute video showing how to find the angle of the stairs and then what happened i got a lot of questions and comments uh regarding what happens after you find the angle and so that's what we're going to do today is i'm going to show you what it takes to get the angle and how simple it is and then what happens to transition that to building an actual rail um, this is not a style that we do much anymore most of what we do is industrial commercial this is more of a um, residential style it's on a commercial application application uh, we're at a local warehouse, uh, warehouse, one of our customers here, and um, this is just one that's been here for a very long time. So. We will grind, feel, let go, metal works, the real deal. With our business on hard work, quality craftsmanship since 06, and we're ready to grow it even bigger. We grind, weld, build, Matco metal works, the real deal, let's grow. We weld, grind, build, for the real deal. Matt Cole Metal Works, let's crawl! What I've got here is three different methods of finding the angle. They're all digital, um, one's a magnetic, um, but it's very simple and it's something that's easily accessible um, I do have a board simple four by four you can use a two by four you can use a level anything that's relatively straight um, and so what you're gonna do as I showed you in the previous video is you're just gonna lay this on top of your steps try to catch two or three we're on four right now but that's okay and I'll bring you up here and see if I can get you a little closer So you can uh, see exactly so what I've got here. This is the one I showed you in the previous video, and it's the one I actually prefer the most. But it's just a simple Husky, um, comes from Home Depot. I'm sure there's other brands, it's just what we had, uh, what I found, and it works great. Simple level, but it also works. Um, so if you're just doing, you know, trying to find something, whether it's plumb or not, whether it's level, uh, you can use the bubble on each side, and then you just hit the on button, and it comes on, reads the temperature. And then it's got a digital readout. Um, I keep plastic on stuff. I'm kind of OCD about that. I like to leave plastic on. I've had this very long time. And I used to years ago leave plastic on my phone, but I don't do that anymore. So anyway, I'll show you this one first. Um, and you can, basically it's got uh, on off button and then you've got a hold button, uh, reset and uh, linear feet. And so what we're doing today is I'm just gonna lock it in basically that way I don't have to try to remember and go walk to the truck and my notepad or whatever um, I can just lock it in place so I'm gonna put this on here and typical degree it's gonna be pretty close to that because this is a typical rise and run so you're a lot of times around the 30 to 35 degree mark uh, to where you're gonna end up these steps are really old um, so the likelihood that they're exactly the same is probably very slim uh, so right now I'll lock that in and we're at 31.1 just want to make sure you can see that so 31.1 like I said this is just a, a husky I don't know the cost of this it's 20 bucks or so uh, comes with a nice little case and it runs off of two AAA batteries so 31.1 what I'm gonna do is just try to see how close these are so press and hold the uh, on off button and it turns it off and then we'll get this other one here the next one this is something i actually ordered it's uh, by johnson and i ordered this because we use this for um it's magnetic also just like that one um but it's it works great on our tubing bender machine uh, you'll see us using that a lot because it's small we can just set it there it's not uh, you know as bulky as that one same thing just hit the on off button um just hit it turn it on 
and it's going to read error if you don't have it you know you're not you're moving around or whatever and you can zero it out that's the only thing on here on off and a zero so we're going to put it on here and see how close we are so we were 31.1 on the last one and this shows you how far off you know stuff can be digital 31.4 so i can't i don't think you can lock this one in so 31.4 on this one um so you, it just shows you know you're gonna have differences uh in your equipment but you're only talking about two or three degrees on on a slope and it's not going to make that big of a difference uh in this application uh sometimes it would but if if we can get within a quarter of a degree i'm usually fine um our saw only i only go by half a degrees anyway um so I'm not, I'm not trying to get a quarter of a degree. And I'll show you uh, when we get back to the shop later today, a project we're working on for a platform where it came out to like a quarter or three quarters or something. Um, we only go by halves just because the saw is not that accurate anyway. So I'm gonna press and hold the on off button, turns that off. And the final one, once again, they're all magnetic. This one is strictly, and this one is probably something more common that you've seen um this one is something you definitely can pick up all of these can be bought at a hardware store that johnson like i said i ordered um uh, i don't know if that was ms mcs msc uh, mcmaster car somewhere i think i got that one um this one's a swanson very typical all like your speed squares and levels and stuff if you're a swanson brand the only thing is this one it's gonna be really tough to get like a half a degree because they're so close together um so it's probably gonna be reading like a 31 or a 32 somewhere around there I'm basically just going to put it on there and yeah like i said so right now we're we're showing about a 31. um you won't be able to read a half a degree in this one just because the as you can see the lines are so close together um it's really hard to, to do a half a degree but if you're at 31 um you, you're you're going to be fine if you build this rail or this application at 31 degrees so like i said uh the what you need as far as you know the angle finder um is a two by four a four by four uh if you've got a level um i mean you can use a broomstick it doesn't have to be extravagant this is just what i've got in the back of the truck and it works great <clears throat> so i'll explain to you um it'll be easier to show you um what what happens next by what i've got in the shop because that actually is um got handrails on it and it's pretty close to this one this one's 31 and i think the one in the shop may be 33 ish somewhere around there so that all just depends on your rise and run so we'll head back to the shop here in just a minute and i'll show you what we got going on all right guys we're back in the shop and this is a perfect example to show you what happens when you get the angle and how that transitions into the rails uh, these are already built uh, but i can explain pretty well at um you know what happens so i'll actually show you using the exact same digital protractor these are a little different as you can see this is basically exactly what we just looked at, even though that was brick or concrete or mortar uh, steps, these are gonna be steel stringers with um, bar grade steps. There'll be six steps in here and then your top step will be here, which is uh, bar grading all the way across the top of that five by five platform. And so I'll use the exact same thing in order to transition from my angle, which we built these, so we had to know the angles to do this, but I'll just go ahead and put that on there so you can see so we're 34, 33 and a half, I think is what we were actually doing them at. That one's 33 and a half. So basically what happens is you're gonna transition from 33 degrees, which is what we're reading there. We'll just say 33 to make it even, 33 and a half um, is what we were doing. And I'll show you in order to mark that out, we just have to make a little sketch and make notes uh, this is it kind of a mess, but uh, we know exactly what it is because we actually as we build them because we got Eight more or ten more of these to do these platforms. We make a sketch on the first one Everything after that is exactly the same. So you can see I've got my 33 degree angle 33 and a half and so basically 
you're gonna copy that on the bottom of your post, not all the time because sometimes you may be core drilling, so you don't need to worry about the angle on the bottom. The biggest thing is the angle here and the angle at the very top. And what's gonna happen is your 33 and a half is gonna transition to this top angle. So this up here, that very top angle right there is 33 and a half. Now, you cannot cut a 33 and a half on just one side and have it work out because what's gonna happen is your pipe ends will not line up. Uh, if you wanna bend that, you can. Sometimes we do, but majority of time on stuff like this, it's just easier and quicker just to cut it, cope it, and weld it together. So, you've gotta take your 33 and a half that you get from your step angle here and trans that, transition that to your first angle here, which is 33 and a half. Now, if you divide that by two, because you've got two cuts to make to make that one piece, that 33 and a half is gonna be 16 and three quarters. Like I said, I don't really worry about a quarter of a degree. Uh, our, our saw, I'll show you in a minute, doesn't, it, it's not that accurate. So if you can get a half a degree, you're doing good. Um, and then if you, if you need to adjust it, grind it or whatever you can, um, for this application, what you're seeing here, we got it as close as possible and it works out absolutely perfect. Now, your second angle is gonna be this angle right here, which is the top of your bottom post. That angle, and here's a simple way to figure this, just remember this and you'll always be fine. This top angle and this bottom angle will equal 90 degrees. In order to get this angle here, you could put a protractor on it, however you wanna do it, but I'm gonna tell you a very simple way. If you know that this angle on your, your steps is 33 and a half, that automatically makes that top angle 33 and a half. So we divided that by two in order to, to get that cope and, and cut those two pieces. You divide that in two because the top of this rail is one part of that angle. So in order to do that, you get 16 and three quarters on the end of this, 16 and three quarters on that one, you put them together. Uh, that'll be for another video to actually show you what it looks like as we do that process. So you have 90 degrees. That and this equal 90 all the time. Every time it's going to equal 90. So you subtract 33 and a half from 90, you get 56 and a half. Well, you've got once again, two pieces. There's two pieces that make, make up this angle. Therefore, you have to divide that 56 and a half by two. Otherwise, you'd have one really funky looking connection there. So, 56 and a half divided by two, that's 28 and a quarter. So when we cut this piece here, it had a 28 and a quarter on this end and a 16 and three quarters on that end. That gives you your top rail. To do the bottom on this application, we're using that same angle. So all of your bottom posts, so you got your bottom post here, what we call the top post and your mid post, they're all gonna have that 33 and a half degree angle in order to, to keep this plum. Um, now, getting into the, the mid rails and stuff like that, that's, that's a totally different thing. These are on a 33 and a half degree angle, so therefore these, the end pieces get cut at that. Um, but hopefully this will kind of shed some light on, uh, you know, I, uh, quite a few people ask about how it transitions into that. Um, we do draw it out, like I showed you. Um, we, we generally sketch it out. Same thing on this side, it's no different. Um, and then this, so this is called a guardrail. This is a 42 inch height from the top of your, for your nose tre uh, tread. So if I measure from the corner of this, a vertical line straight up, the top of it up here is 42 inches. And then by code, you have to have a 36 inch grab rail. So once again, you always measure from the nose of the step. If I go directly straight up vertical line from the nose of this to the top of this, I'll have 36 inches. Um, now that varies, that can be, by code you can be 34 to 38, I think in most states, I know in North Carolina it is, um, I think most states are pretty much the same. 34 to 38 is code. And then like I said, any guardrail should be 42 inches. Um, so hopefully that helps and you can kind of um, transition from finding those angles and that will make it a little bit easier. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, like I said, I'm just going a little bit more in depth. Uh, 
it would take a long time. It would, it'll be a longer video and I would like to do that to show you the step-by-step -step process and what it takes to cut these, um, what the dimensions are from here to here. Uh, you'll hear it say long to long, short to short. That's just a measurement. For instance, on this one, it's 40 inches long to long. That's a long 33 and a half to a long 28 and a half, uh, 40, 40 inches, um, long to short. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a little complex doing it, doing this, is, this is a little different. This is a little, a little more advanced because you've got so many angles and you've got these angles um, that have to extend 12 inches past by code. And so, like I said, you're having two different heights because you've got the guardrail and the grab rail. So if you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment, email me, I don't care. I'll uh, help you out best I can. Uh, we've got a lot of these to do. So in the process, I'm gonna try and make a video, uh, put together some clips of uh, what it takes to cut these, uh, make these different angles um, and make everything work and look nice and pretty like this. And we've got two of these in the shop sitting here, trying to keep them out of the weather and uh, they'll be ready to prime uh, hopefully next week. So I uh, hope that helps. Hope everyone is ready for their 4th of July weekend. Um, I'm sure we'll be working. We've just got a massive amount to do. So uh, if you got any questions, shoot us an email, comment below and uh, like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next video.